This is LXBN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. Unless you miss the rash of people updating their Facebook timelines with statuses they believe to be legally binding, you know already that Facebook has once again updated their terms of service. Joining me today to break down what's new with Facebook's policies is a frequent guest of the program, Gerald Ferguson of Baker Hostetler, an author on their excellent blog, The Data Privacy Monitor. Jerry, has Facebook as once again updated its privacy policy, or as they more aptly call it, their data use policy? What's new for users? Well, Colin, there's two significant changes in this policy. One has gotten a lot of attention, another very little attention. The one that's gotten very little attention is actually the important one. The one that's gotten a lot of attention is Facebook had put in place this scheme for letting people vote on policy changes. And not surprisingly, when people started voting on policy changes, Facebook didn't like the results. So they've eliminated that provision from their data use policy. And as you point out, it's not a privacy policy. It's not about protecting your privacy. It's a data use policy. It's telling you about what they're going to do with the data use. And so there's been a lot of anger and a lot of comment about this so-called voting right being taken away. But the reality is the rights that we have in a private company like Facebook are the rights that they give us. And I think that it's not surprising that if they feel like voting is getting in the way of what they want to do, that's going to be taken away. The important change, and it's one that's really slipped in at the bottom, is for the first time they have a provision that permits unlimited sharing with affiliates. Any information they can gather from you they now can share with some other company that falls within the de legal definition of an affiliate. And that definition, Colin, is really quite broad. They could even have a minority ownership in a company, and as long as that minority ownership gives them some ability to influence that company, it's going to be treated as an affiliate. So this really opens the door for Facebook to be taking positions in advertising agencies, in behavioral, uh, in behavioral advertising companies, and even traditional advertisers, and having unlimited sharing with them. That's the big change I see. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Included in that group, I think, is also Instagram, a company that they now own. So they're allowed to share data between those two things. So what do you expect to see as a response from regulators, assuming there hasn't been some already? This policy seems to me very similar to when Google notified users that it would share data among all of their products, and that didn't seem to go over so well, both with uh, the, the federal government, but more so even with the international community. So what, expected, what response do you expect to see on this? Well, uh, Colin, I think that you, you really uh, nailed the issue there, which is the analogy with what happened with Google. And I think that uh, when... Google start, started taking the position that the information that they get from your Gmail account, they can share in connection with your YouTube account, which they can in turn combine with information with your Google Plus account. That was something that set up a red flag with regulators all over the world. And uh, we still are seeing the fallout from that. The European regulators have taken a very strong position that Google has to change its policies. Google is still digesting that. And it's not going to be so easy for Google because you can't unscramble the egg. You know, now, this data combination has already taken place. The Facebook situation is a little bit different because up to now, Facebook has really been focused on its core strengths, which are creating this, the, the, the uh, online community, the social network. And for the Instagram purchase, which you mentioned, is a, is a very related, highly related enterprise. It's a highly related way of interacting. That's why they bought it. So there is, I think, less going to be less surprise among consumers that that information might be shared. But if you look at what has been happening with Google's policy, in particular, how earlier this year they modified it so that anything that they gather about you online can be used in any other advertising context, including in offline context. I think that is where they are really risking the ire of regulators, and that's where the confrontation may take place. 
And, and just my final point is, we don't know what their acquisition strategy is going to be, but the reaction of regulators may be strongly tied to the next purchase we see coming from Facebook six months from now or in the next year. Again, that was Gerald Ferguson of the Data Privacy Monitor. Be sure to visit the publication at that datapricymonitor.com. A very, very excellent blog. And of course, if you're interested in what the rest of the LexBlog Network's thousands of authors have to say as well, come visit us at lxbn.com. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Colin.